And there are several ways to look at that, I think. One way is to say, well, um, actually, not very much, really, considering that almost any Democrat who had su survived the ruling primary season would have won, given the striking low approval ratings of President Bush, given the meltdown of the financial markets this fall, and given the um, strikingly inept campaign run by John McCain. He, uh, he tried to invoke a Cold War culture warrior themes, dividing the nation into either or, uh, native born versus immigrant, straight versus gay, um, real Americans versus everybody else. And certainly in the early 21st multicultural century of ours, uh, those themes of division and fear really didn't resonate with the population. So I think that a question remains, would um, a white Democratic candidate or any white candidate have won by a wider margin than Obama's 6%? Certainly there were some interesting twists and turns in uh, Republicans' efforts to denigrate Obama. I recall in September, Representative Lynn Westmoreland of Georgia said of both Michelle and Barack Obama that they were members of an elitist class, he said, and uppity. Also interesting, I think, was the notion that Obama was just a vacuous celebrity someone like uh, Paris Hilton, uh, a mere entertainer, devoid of any substance at all. Of course, these themes played on various tropes in uh, American history and the history of racial ideologies. So it, it is true, I think, that Republicans did deploy a variety of racial ideologies in their campaign against Obama. But, um, moving to another point, I would like to, us to consider um, what I call kind of the collective self-congratulation among a certain segment of the American pop population that Obama's victory signaled a transformation in American race relations. Uh, at the election night party I attended, I heard that uh, as soon as the election was called. But this was a new day in American race relations. And sure enough, on November 7, the Gallup poll published a story titled, Americans See Obama as Race Relations Milestone. And among the findings of the poll were that over two-thirds of Americans said that Obama's election as president is either the most important advance for blacks in the past 100 years or among the two or three most important such advances. After Obama's victory, 67% of Americans said a solution to relations between blacks and whites will eventually be worked out the highest value Gallup has measured on this question. Seven out of ten Americans believe that race relations in this country will get at least a little better as a result of Obama's election, including 28% who will say that they will get a lot better. And in conclusion, according to the poll, the data reviewed also showed that Americans believe Obama's election represents a highly significant milestone in the history of race relations in this country. Well, this report obviously brings together at least two very suspect trends in American history, 20 and 20th century, first century polling, and um, also the persistent use of the term race relations. What, what does that word mean? And indeed, its imprecision makes it highly problematic as a tool of historical analysis. Um, in the context of this hyper-segregated nation, what would a transformation in race relations really mean? In neighborhoods, in schools, in religious institutions, in workplaces, what does improvement in race relations mean then? That 
white people will suddenly treat their black neighbors, co-workers, and co-religionists religionists with more respect, or that whites will elect more black politicians from majority white districts, Again, I think the imprecision of this term masks certain larger issues, in particular structures of inequality that preserve the legacy of slavery. And by structures, I mean uh, the uh, relatively low net worth of black households compared to white households. <laughs> relatively low black educational levels compared to white levels, and of course, uh, persi a persistent racial division of labor, which again highlights the legacy of slavery. The hard reality of the fact is that, at least in last year, in 2007, one quarter of, of all black people in this country lived in poverty compared to a national poverty rate of 10%. And certainly uh, another suspect measurement, uh, the measurement of poverty by my um, guess, at least 25% of all white Americans today live on the thin edge of distress, just a healthcare disaster, uh, healthcare emergency away from utter disaster. And uh, the percentage of black Americans living uh, on that thin edge of distress is even larger. Again, the disproportion there, uh, a legacy of slavery. So what does Obama's election then tell us about the plight of the black poor today? And should we in fact think of his election in terms of one very talented, smart black man cracking a glass ceiling while uh, large numbers of black people fall through the trap door. Uh, that is the economic crisis that uh, we are going through today. Is it possible that Obama's policies will substantially reverse generations of dispossession and immiseration among black people? Will his public works program focused on rebuilding the nation's infrastructure, roads and bridges, have a measurable impact on the well-being of blacks in northern central cities and southern rural areas? Or will these projects reflect the racist history of the construction industry and the largest construction unions? The issue here again is the elevation of a single man to the presidency. While structural factors related to education and employment will render a significant proportion of the black population poor and unschooled. Indeed, perhaps a case can be made for the idea that many black people, as the most vulnerable of all American citizens, will be affected much more dramatically by the economic downturn and by its distinguishing characteristics the rise in unemployment and foreclosure rates, then these people will be affected by the election of President Obama. We can note, for instance, the decline in manufacturing, uh, the loss of jobs in the auto industry, historically an avenue uh, for black men and women after <coughs> World War II into the middle class. We can note, too, that Many blacks have found an entree into the middle class through public employment, as teachers, as bus drivers, as firefighters, and these positions too now will be cut because of uh, budget constraints at the local and county and state levels. It's also possible that blacks, as well as immigrants, documented and undocumented, 